Good morning, guys. I see that there's a couple of people already waiting. I just want to do a quick sound check. If you could just raise a hand and uh, confirm that you can hear me okay, we're going to get going in about 10 minutes here. Awesome. I see a couple of hands up. Great. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll get going here shortly. morning everyone I see that a couple more people have joined I just want to do a quick sound check again just to make sure everybody can hear me okay that my volume is right just throw a hand up uh, and let me know if if the sound is okay on your end I see some hands going up I appreciate it thank you guys so much we're gonna get going here in about uh, six or seven minutes
Good morning, everybody. I'm going to do one more quick sound check here just to make sure you guys can still hear me okay. If you can confirm, just throw a hand up. Awesome. I see some of you guys throwing up hands. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get going in a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to give everybody some time just to join. We have a 10 a.m. start. Before we get going, uh, I just want to encourage everybody to sign up for a trial of Unique Cloud. Navigate to unitronics.io or sign up in Unilogic. Uh, we are allowing uh, a trial period for you to stress test your assets that are connected to figure out what subscription might work the best for you. Uh, you do not have to hook up your own PLCs. We do offer two demo PLCs that will come built into your trial. Uh, so do um, take a look at what, what we have to offer for our, for our cloud solution uh, and we will get going here shortly. Hello, my name is Johnny Anastasides, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Unitronics. This is UniCloud and its new features. UniCloud is the no-code IIoT cloud platform for OEMs and machine builders. UniCloud allows you to create user-defined dashboards to highlight the key information from all of your sites worldwide. To begin, I would like to introduce some terminology that will bring the cloud full circle. The asset type is the application designed to be running in the controller. The asset type will consist of all tags and alarms that will be pushed to UniCloud. The asset is the actual machine in the field. Now the asset is not necessarily just the controller. If there is a router involved in the install, this would also be part of the asset. Now a PLC being added to the UniCloud is going to be validated by its serial number. You then have the ability to provide or not provide remote access and the router itself that is tied to the asset can also be accessed via UniCloud. The UniCloud account is going to be assigned to an organization under a company name. This company will be added as the machine builder. You then have the ability to add partners or channels who can add or subtract users to the organization to give the intended user access to what they need. UniCloud is meant to raise efficiency. You have the ability to boost your bottom line with built-in data analysis tools that will allow you to track, monitor, and manage KPIs. One of the key features of UniCloud is fast commissioning. The fact that there is no code needed and the setup is extremely easy with the tools provided you have the ability to be as efficient as possible. Also included with UniCloud is full control. Everything from remote access to organizational management is provided with your UniCloud account when you are an admin. Lastly, go live in under 30 minutes. It is that amount of time that it takes you to have a fully integrated IIoT solution 
to bridge all gaps. You'll see here that configuring your machine, connecting the PLC, building any dashboards, and managing your organization is done in just minutes. This will give you the ability to analyze key metrics, improve performance, increase revenue, keep track and monitor maintenance, and give all users who have access to the account the ability to see the information that is going to make them the most effective. Again, this is all done without any code or any previous cloud expertise. And UniCloud truly does have it all, a built-in infrastructure, interfaces, and functionality all in one place. UniCloud allows you to add IIoT capabilities to your current and future installations. Again, the ability to monitor and keep track of assets that are installed worldwide are truly what gives you the power to be effective. From a business intelligence standpoint, UniCloud gives you the ability to increase sales, compare sites, and reduce costs throughout. You also give the ability to extend reach across your entire fleet. Do everything from monitor online, update applications, upgrade firmware, right from your interface. Now, UniCloud's main features include the following. Data presentation, custom visualization, and the ability to set up data analytics are what are going to allow you to show the information coming in from your assets in a way that is completely controlled by you as the user. Additionally, asset management gives you the ability to add, remove, archive, and also activate devices that are in the field, going to be in the field, or were previously in the field at one point. Organization management gives you the ability to add users, remove users, suspend users, activate users, allow changing of passwords for login, and additionally, regional settings like multiple language support. At the bottom of this list, but certainly not the least important, secure remote access. With UniCloud, you have the ability, depending on the controller that is connected, the ability to show web server, VNC, for Unistream only, VPN, and also the web user interface for any router that is in the field. Now, I would like to just take a second here and distinguish the differences between some of these remote access utilities. VNC is going to be a mirror of the screen that you have the ability to open up in a separate window than your cloud account or on a dashboard, giving your user the ability to operate the panel directly from the interface. VPN is what is going to be used to create a tunnel through the cloud into the asset you're trying to connect to and open up the door for online test mode, downloading, and also firmware updates. The ability to access the UCR's web UI is going to give you capabilities to change settings on the router without having to connect to it in the field. This is very valuable for already installed assets. Now, why you're all here today, UniCloud's new features. Connect third-party devices to UniCloud. With a Unitronics router, you now have the ability to act as a Modbus master to any Modbus field-capable device, whether it be another PLC 
or an app that has this capability. This truly does give you the ability to now have all devices in one place on UniCloud. An important feature is the ability to set up permissions for reading and writing to these devices that are in the field. In your router configuration, you have the ability to set what you want these capabilities to be. GPS is also a new feature. You now have the ability to locate all installed assets worldwide automatically with no manual aspects at play. This can only be done currently with the B8 version of the router. The B5 is not GPS capable. The B8 is needed in order to be able to locate via GPS. And lastly, widget enhancements. You now have advanced analytical tools like comparing assets as well right in a single widget. Dashboard building offers a fully customizable experience. All widgets are drag and drop directly from a widget menu and no code is needed. Simply choose the attributes as desired. All of these properties are going to be drop down selections, giving you the ability to select solely from what is available, making setup extremely simple and direct. Again, dashboards support multiple languages and you also have regional settings available to set up your account as needed for users in select areas. All of this telemetry passing from controller and router to dashboard is completely secure. You must log into your account to view and make changes and communication is certificate based. Now communication from cloud to controller or router is going to be done through MQTT, which is an industry 4.0 protocol designed to be protected like this. I'd like to take a minute and break down the architecture that UniCloud provides. Now from a PLC standpoint, the UniStream is going to be cloud ready. And what I mean by cloud ready is you have the ability to, once you have internet connection, set up all of your asset type configurations in UniLogic, sync it to the cloud, connect to the internet, and you have the ability to connect to your UniStream. For Vision, Samba, Jazz, and third-party devices, a Unitronics router needs to be in between cloud interface and the controller. The reason for this is Vision, Samba, Jazz do not support MQTT protocol natively like the Unistream does. The router is what is going to pass your telemetry from the controller up to your cloud interface. Now you as the machine builder have the ability to design dashboards, monitor and manage your information and also your organization, and you have the ability to keep track of performance, service, maintenance. Now on your user dashboards, offer remote access, generate reports, create predictive maintenance, keep track of all sites and compare them against one another and you can collect aggregated data that is going to allow you to execute this analysis. An all-in-one package to be the most effective you can be once all of your fleet is installed in the field. I would like to take a minute here to acknowledge an industry first, the first and only PLC with a built-in cloud service that offers no monthly fee and no additional purchase of hardware or software. The Unistream C series is what is going to provide this capability. Now a lot of these part numbers are going to look familiar. What determines that it is actually a cloud model PLC is the C in place of the B where you would normally see it. 
Now, what a cloud model gives you, right? I had already mentioned that a Unistream is cloud capable out of the box. What you are getting with a C model is a built in five year startup subscription. This means that your plan is included from connection to the end of your five years. You have the ability to do everything that is needed and collect up to 200,000 tags per month. No additional hardware is required because a UCR is not needed. And your configuration is going to be cloud interface based and also Unilogic based. As long as you have the internet connection, you do not need any additional pieces of hardware. Now a UCR is optional, right? It is not required in cases of Unistream. It is required in cases of Vision, Samba, Jazz, and third party. It is optional in the case of Unistream because it is an it is an avenue to give you your internet connectivity. Now, flavors of connection that are offered are mobile, Wi-Fi, and wired WAN. Once you have connection, you will have the ability to set up your configuration and ultimately pass telemetry to your cloud account. I would like to take a second here and just touch on router models. If you are going to do wired or Wi-Fi connection, you do not necessarily need a SIM card. If you are going to go the mobile route, you need to make sure that the part number that you select matches up with the network you're going to use. So for example, if you are in North America and would like to use Verizon, you must go with a dash VE model. And the same goes for AT&T. You would get an AT&T SIM card and use a dash AT model. From a hardware standpoint, a B5 offers less ports than a B8. The picture off to the right here is a B8 model. You are going to have three LAN ports and one WAN port, whereas with a B5, you would have one LAN port and one WAN port. I would also like to remind everybody of our trial promotion. Now, when you sign up for an account, you are going to have three months free to stress test your assets that you connect to the cloud. This is available for all subscriptions. You have the ability to set the update rate all the way down to one second to see, one, what features the UniCloud gives you and the power that you have, but also is going to allow you to change the interval time to determine what subscription is ultimately going to make sense for the application. In this trial, you have an unlimited number of PLCs per unlimited number of customers that you want to add to your organization. And you have the ability to experience UniCloud in full with no payment required. I would also like to make note of free secure remote access until the end of 2022. Once you register your organization and connect to your PLC, you will have the ability to, at the very least, experience VPN. If it's a Unistream, you'll have the ability to also verify that web server and VNC offer what you need as well. Starting in 2023, you will require a startup subscription in order to get remote access. So I do recommend uh, stress testing now while you can, while everything is in its uh, promotion phase. Thank you. I would now like to demonstrate third-party support through our UCR router over Modbus. In order to connect a third-party device to our UniCloud solution, the first thing that will be done is adding the router in the device management section of the cloud under routers management. Add a new router and validate it via its serial number. Once validated, select add. And the router has been added successfully. Now, normally, you would be validating a Unitronics model serial number. In the case of adding a third party device, navigate to PLC management, 
add a new PLC. In the PLC type dropdown, select Modbus. This is going to allow you to generate a serial number that will ultimately be used for connection in your router configuration. Select Generate, and you'll see the PLC serial number is provided. Go ahead and select Add, and you'll see that the PLC was added with the serial number that we just saw. Navigate back to Routers Management, select the router that was just added, select the PLC tab, and choose the plus to add that serial number that was just created. Select Validate. This is going to tie your third-party device to this router so that the cloud knows where it is communicating to. Go ahead and hit Close. Now that we have our Modbus device added to our device management section and tied to the router we're ultimately going to be communicating with, go ahead and set up your router to communicate with UniCloud. You will see here the router that I am connected to is given its WAN connectivity through a hardwired connection. Navigate to Services and select UniCloud. Select Connect to verify that you have access and connectivity to your cloud account. You'll see here UniCloud Webinar 1 was reached. I'm going to hit Save. Now, once my profile has been updated and my configuration has been applied, I'm going to select the PLC tab. This is going to allow us to link the generated serial number to the router so that the cloud knows what device it is ultimately communicating to. I'm going to add my new PLC as Modbus device. Now the serial number specifically is going to be the one that we generated on the cloud account. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Very important, it is not a Unitronics model now. So go ahead and choose Modbus Slave. The Modbus device ID and the timeout are going to keep uh, I'm going to keep as default. I'm just going to add the IP address for the controller that I'm connecting to. It's 192.168.2.90. The LAN address of my router is 192.168.2.1. Now, 502 is the default Modbus port on most devices. It is on the device that I am connecting to my cloud account. I'm going to leave port 502 as the default setting, and I'm going to choose Save. Once saved and updated, I'm going to choose the Assets tab. This is going to allow me to create an asset type that's ultimately going to be tied to this third-party Modbus device. I'm going to name this Modbus App or Modbus Application and select Add. Now on this menu, you'll see at the top if you are going to support GPS positioning on this asset type, this would be the check. This would be the checkbox that you're going to select. I am connecting my Modbus device to a B5 router, so I am unable at this point to pull up GPS, my GPS location through this router. But on my cloud account currently, I have a Unistream connected through a B8 router, and I will show you what the GPS location looks like when we get back to our device management portion. For my Modbus-related device, I'm going to add a new tag, and unlike in the normal asset type configuration, 
I now have a Modbus slave address list as opposed to which pieces of the memory map I am pulling from over PCOM in a normal Unitronics controller. I'm going to give this a name of tag. This is a 16-bit integer in my controller. I'm going to choose 16-bit int with the high byte first. You are then going to choose your read function and write function if applicable. If you want to block writing, you can choose none as the selection and reading will only be available. My address is zero and I'm going to choose sync and save to UniCloud. And you'll see that the asset type has updated successfully. If I navigate back to my cloud account right now, I would see this Modbus app in my list of available applications. I'm going to hit save. And this is going to save the changes that I just made to my router configuration. Now that I have my configuration applied and my asset type synced, I am going to navigate back to my cloud account and this time select assets management. I'm going to add this third party Modbus device as a new asset by first selecting the asset type. We created one called Modbus app. The PLC serial number is the one that we had generated before. I'm going to choose validate. Now you'll see that the catalog number is not a Unitronics model now. This is a Modbus field device. And again, it does not have to be a PLC. This could be anything that supports Modbus from a slave or field device standpoint. Lastly, I'm going to give it an asset name. And select save. Now I must download the certificate at this point and load it into the router configuration. This is what is giving you your secure communication to the controller that you are adding. Go ahead and choose download. I'm then going to navigate back to my web UI. I'm going to choose certificates. I want to choose the file that was just downloaded. I'm going to choose upload file and you will see that once the certificate is successfully loaded I will get a message telling me so. I'm going to save my configuration one last time. And if I navigate back to my cloud account, I now see that my third party controller displays as connected. If I want to verify that the data is coming through, I'm going to come here to tags. And if I change the value to 50, change my subscription rate to one second. I now see my updated value of 50. Now I had mentioned that my Unistream is connected through a B8 router right now providing GPS location. If I come into my connected Unistream here, you will see that my latitude, longitude, and location has updated according to the position that my router is providing. So again, GPS is provided through a B8 router and not a B5 router. If you need true GPS location, the B8 router is what you are going to be using. Now, speaking of my connected Unistream, you'll see that my asset type is new features. Let's take a look at some of the new tools that we have in the latest release of cloud.
Now navigating to my main dashboard, you will see my unit on a map located in Quincy, Mass. If I select my asset, this is going to load a VNC connection for the controller that I'm connected to. Because I have allowed myself VNC access, I'm the full admin on my account, you have full control over which users have this capability and don't, all the way down to which dashboards they have access to and so on. I have full control over the face of this HMI via VNC. I have the ability to choose a new value, and it updates on the controller that is at this site. Now, if you would like to give the ability without VNC to adjust parameters in your controller installed, we now have widgets that are going to that are going to allow you to do so. So, for example, this value here, I have limitations set that I cannot enter a value outside of 50 to 100. So, for example, if I try to write the value of 44, my update button does not enable itself. If I enter a value of 54, update allows me to do so. It's going to ask if we would like to proceed because this truly, in fact, is going to change the value at the PLC level. This is great for PID applications where you're controlling zone temperature. You can log in anywhere in the world, change a zone temperature, and your PID application at the PLC level will raise that temperature for you. So it's a very, very powerful feature. If I choose confirm, you'll see that that value changes. Now, I also have the ability to toggle switches based on a previous state of a bit. So if my current bit is off, I have the ability to turn it on with a switch that is part of a widget right from my dashboard. Now, for all my New England Patriots fans, right, on Saturday, we love Tom Brady, right? But now that it is Tuesday, I can turn my switch on. It's going to ask me if I would like to proceed. I'm going to choose yes. And we now have our true feelings, right? <laughs> now, one of the other new features that we have is the ability to compare assets directly on a widget. So, for example, if I have a unit in the field and I would like to compare it to another asset on the same widget, there are options to implement this now. You have the ability to also color code these, so the colors do not have to be the same. I could have my compared asset be orange, whereas the asset that I am looking at currently be green or red or so on. So you still have full customization over all these widgets. Now, if anybody has any questions, I would now like to open it up for Q&A. Okay, guys, well, you uh, enter your questions for me. Uh, I just want to take a few things a step further. Uh, one of the new widget enhancements as well is dashboard level math. Outside of the PLC, the telemetry that you are passing, you now have the ability to execute multiplication and dividing to So that is another enhancement that you have for um, the cloud in this in this new release. For GPS location, uh, I would like to show real quick uh, how exactly to enable this in Unilogic. So on my account currently, I have a unit. Uh, I'm sorry, a UniStream that is connected to a B8 router. The first thing you're going to do, obviously, when you're connecting your UniStream is set up your uh, panel Ethernet settings. So my IP address and the default gateway reflect what I need in order to get out to the Internet through my B8 router. What I'm going to do next is add the router in my router management. So if I enable my router, 
add my IP address and select the B8 model. If I then go to my cloud portion and scroll down under router settings, I can use GPS location and this is what is going to enable GPS at the cloud level. Now, uh, I am going to answer questions here. Again, feel free uh, to enter your questions uh, and I would be happy to answer them. Okay. Okay, I have a couple of you guys asking for uh, recordings that will absolutely be available afterwards. I have a lot of opinions on Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, yes, you, so uh, I will. I will have this uh, recording available. So anybody who has any in-depth questions or questions that go uh, either beyond the scope of what we talked about or application-specific questions, feel free to give me a call afterwards or just shoot an email into the inbox. I would be happy to discuss uh, anything further. Okay, a schedule uh, function. So right now, something like that is uh, going to have to be created between dashboard and controller. So uh, yes, it is it is possible, but it is not yet a or, or there isn't a tr a true schedule widget available. But uh, for the for the gentleman who asked that question, feel free to reach out to me, and I can uh, I can kind of give you some some hints on on how that works between interface and controller. Okay. Uh, question on writing scripts. Currently, you are limited to the widgets and the connection parameters that are available. Uh, in UniCloud. Okay, uh, so so I have a great question. Um, can you group information together from two different applications? Yes, right? So absolutely, and this is also going to allow you uh, to perform analysis on aggregated data so once they are joined types you'll have the ability for example to average motor hours power consumption across controllers in the field no matter what the asset type is okay so um control okay uh for for people who are curious about more customization options we do have premium branding available now what that is going to do is give you expansive customization on the interface itself it is also going to give you capabilities on adding your own logo in place of unicloud logos and also a subdomain option as well. So it will allow you to have your uh, company name in the actual address itself. Okay, so uh, vision, some, some, some vision specific, vision and Samba specific info. Um, you, will be using a router in this case. Now, this is because MQTT itself is not native in these controllers. So the router is actually what is executing the MQTT passing of telemetry. So what you are doing when you are using a vision or a Samba controller is you're communicating PCOM to the router and then MQTT to the cloud. So it is it is different than what you are doing when you are connecting a third party device. But just as an example, a Samba or a V430 or a V700, all these controllers have, you have Modbus slave capabilities. So if you set those up as a Modbus slave, 
you can add them to your interface just as if they were uh, a third-party controller with Modbus slave capabilities. So um, I, I know I had mentioned this as well too, but you are not limited to just controllers. If you have any device or any application that supports Modbus from a field device standpoint, right? Because the router is going to act as the master. You want to just accept the commands that the router is pushing to you. You can be added to a cloud interface. So this is going to give you um, free reign to add devices, no matter what they are, so long as they support Modbus in, in the field and have everything in, in one place. Uh, so we do have pricing available on our cloud-based website. So feel free to navigate to that and you will see the price options that we have. Um, a subscription is needed for each asset. And the reason for this is depending on what the controller is doing on a single cloud account, you may not want all or you may not need all devices to update at 10 seconds, at 30 seconds and so on. So as your amount of telemetry goes down and your required interval time goes up, we give you the option to have a more lax subscription in those scenarios and have an advanced subscription or something like that or an intermediate subscription in cases where faster pushing is needed and so on. Okay, so reporting, um, I have a question on the method of reporting. So currently, what you can do is, depending on what you have on your dashboard, let's just say if you have a data table on screen or if you have a trend on the data, not on screen, on the, on the dash, on the cloud itself, you're going to have an option to download everything as a screenshot. You're going to have the option to download everything as a CSV file. It is it, it, the... The access into the cloud on the back end uh, is not something that is currently supported. So in um, specific scenarios, right, and, and again, feel free to, to give me a shout and, and discuss this because I have some, some methods that I've, I've tried myself and, and, and seen work, right? Uh, there are ways to do this with the actual controller based application in the, in the mix as well. So there, there, there are a number of options. Feel free to either shoot me an email or give me a call and we can discuss that further. So if you have a, a unit that is MQTT directly, we are not acting as strictly as a normal MQTT broker currently. So you do have to go through either a Unistream or through a router in order to get to the cloud at this current moment. You do have the ability to change uh, naming convention and, and so on uh, as well. Okay, a few more questions here. Okay, so a question about if you have a PLC that is already acting as a Modbus master. So, uh, Except for the 700, which has eight sockets, your vision controller has four sockets available. So if you are already acting as a master on one socket, you can open up a second socket to act as a slave to the router, and this is going to give you capability to push to the cloud. Uh, I have a question about making sure the system is safe from a standpoint of hacking uh, and... Uh, security, right? So if anybody needs actual specification on um, the security level that we meet, let us know. Uh, we have a document that we can provide to you that is going to have the standards that we meet. Um, but I will say that because MQTT in, in, in this form that is being handled by the cloud, since it is certificate based, uh, this is a very safe means of communicating to your router or to your to your uni stream so there is a reason why uh, the process is the way it is and it is ultimately at the end of the day to protect all of the assets that will be in the field and ultimately be pushing data up to the cloud
Okay, now uh, if anybody has any more questions on functionality, uh, like adding things to the dashboard, connecting a device, whether it's Unistream, Vision Samba, or third party, we have a number of videos available and would be happy to, to pass them. So I have a lot of questions about um, different cloud level functionalities. Let us know if you have these questions and we'd be happy to uh, add or, or, or provi provide this uh, provide this the, these steps or, or any documentation that we have available to you. Now I, I, I keep getting a, or I'm getting a question about using filters right in the widget properties itself uh, there is going to be a filter option so depending on if you are trying to have a number of potential things to be shown on a dashboard but you want to limit it to devices that are only devices that are connected only devices that are in comm error and so on these filters are available in the actual widget properties them, themselves so it's all based on what you need to do and what you would like to show on screen All right, I, guys, I appreciate the time. I hope everybody has a great rest of the week uh, and feel free to let us know if, if any questions arise or if any recordings are needed uh, and so on. I hope everybody has a good one. Thank you.